Hi, this is Mrs. La Barbara. This is AP Physics Chapter Six: Work and Kinetic Energy, Video Four. Today's topic is power. The objectives are to understand how power is related to work and be able to calculate power. Let's see. Power is defined as the time rate at which work is done. So, like work and energy, power is scalar quantity. Power is the rate of work is done. That means power equals delta W over delta T. That is the average power. The instantaneous power you have to do the derivative dW over dt. The unit of power is watt, which is named after James Watt, the inventor of the first modern steam engine. One watt is one joule divided by one second. Which equals one kilogram times meter squared over second cubed. Another power unit is horsepower. One horsepower equals seven hundred forty-six watts, which is zero point seven forty-six kilowatts. So kilowatts is another common unit for power. So horsepower is measured,、uh, measuring how fast the horse does work. Actually, horsepower was determined by James Watt, who measured work done by a horse per minute in lifting coal from a coal pit. So we are probably familiar with kilowatt times hour because that is the unit in your electric bill. Kilowatt times hour actually is power times time. Power times time is a unit of energy. That's how your Electricity is built by how much energy you have used. Power also indicate how strong and how fast. So for a powerful football player, is how strong the player is and how fast he can move. In mechanics, we can also express power in terms of force and velocity. Suppose that a force F acts on a body while it undergoes a vector displacement. If f parallel is the component of f tangent to the path, then the work done by this force is delta W equals f parallel times delta S. So the average power equals the work over time, which is f parallel times delta S over time. Delta S over time is velocity. So average power equals to parallel force to the velocity times the average velocity. Instantaneous power is the limit of this expression, so it would be the instantaneous velocity times that force. Since this is f parallel to the velocity, we can write this as force dot v. That's a dot product. Let's do an example. Each of the two jet engines in a Boeing seven sixty seven airliner develops a thrust of one hundred ninety seven thousand newtons. When the airplane is flying at 250 meters per second, what horsepower does each engine develop? So horsepower is the power. So to find power, we use force times velocity. That will give us watts. To convert watts into horsepower, we times by one, and this one has to be one horsepower divided by 746 watts. This way, watts and watts cancel. We have horsepower left. <coughs> Excuse. So it's sixty-six thousand horsepower. Another example: a fifty-kilogram marathon runner runs up the stairs to the top of Chicago four hundred forty-three meter tall Sears Tower, the tallest building in the United States. To lift herself to the top in fifteen minutes, what must be her average power output in watts, in kilowatts, and in horsepower? So here is a picture of Sears Tower. So she has to go from the bottom of the floor all the way to the top. Power equals work over time. So, how much work did she do from the bottom all the way to the top? Well, the force she has to overcome is her weight. And then, force times displacement, which is mgh. She, her her work has to be two point one seven times ten to the fifth joules. In the time of fifteen minutes, we have to convert time into seconds, which is nine hundred seconds. So, the power is. Work over time, you will have two hundred forty-one watts, which is zero point two four one kilowatts, which is zero point three two three horsepower. We can convert watts to horsepower like before. Test your understanding. So the air surrounding an airplane in flight exerts a drag force that acts opposite to the airplane's motion. When a Boeing seven sixty seven 
In the previous example, is flying in a straight line at constant altitude at constant velocity. What is the rate at which the drag force does work on it? Remember, this is just a reminder that each of the two jet engines develops a thrust of 197,000 newtons. Because it's moving at a constant velocity, so net force equals to zero, so the thrust force must be equal to the drag force. So the plane has constant velocity, so the net horizontal force on it must be zero. Hence, the backward drag force must have the same magnitude as the forward force due to combined thrust of two engines. Remember, we did one engine before, now you have two engines. This means that drag force must do negative work on the airplane at the same rate that the combined thrust force does positive work. The combined thrust force does positive work at a rate of two times 60 6,000 horsepower. Remember before we did each engine provided 66,000 horsepower. Now you have two. So you mu must mul multiply the whole thing by two. That gives you 132,000 horsepower. So the drag force must be due to work at a rate of a negative 102,000 horsepower. So the answer is five. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.